like one love and get rid of the other. Like Sandra chose one love before God called Andrew and Josh and Kennedy. Yeah, well, actually, um, well, I met Josh through Natasha, and then we met DJ through Josh. So it's all it's all connected. <laughs> and I've and I've known Natasha since I was a year old. We lived next door to each other for uh, for 25 years. And and I met Ben's when I was acting in his. Uh, was it your first short film, uh, Decorating uh, 101? And so I was cast in that, and uh, that was pretty interesting. So that's how we met. And I, and I, I didn't know I knew Ben's, but I'd seen a lot of his films before. So once I met him, I was like, wow, I know that guy. Where did I see that guy? <laughs> now, it's, it's interesting because you've always been the ter Ben's. You've always been determined to, to do your own thing. I uh, Just the other day I was looking over um, uh, an interview we did on television uh, about six years ago when you were on the, uh, the global television series that you were on. That's right. And, yes. And <laughs> um, you were talking about, you know, doing your own thing and... and uh, uh, straying off the page a little bit and bringing what you you bring to to the role. Absolutely, you have to do that because um, if you you know a script is a skeleton, so you know you definitely have to always be creating. And in the career in entertainment, you you know you have to do the same thing. You have to be creating, you know, uh, the opportunities for yourself and for others. So uh, this was an opportunity for us to do that, and we we, uh, we worked with a lot of great actors, uh, you know, all over the country. And, um, and you know, it's, it was definitely a great experience because it was like all positive energy, it was all love, and the story is something that needs to be told. Uh, basically, the, the story is about these characters facing uh, a critical moment in their life and, and how they were going to react to it. Uh, so, you know, uh, Russell Ewan, how he reacts to seeing his wife in that state and what he does at that moment to try and help. Uh, you know, so so we, we deal with a lot of that. And it's, it is a short film. Mm -hmm. So it, we're going to take all those stories and play it out between 14 and 15 minutes. So it's going to be a lot of information thrown at you. And I think it's going to be very interesting that way. Uh, so let me, let me ask Natasha, when you got the script, what did you bring to it that wasn't on the page? night before the shoot, I, I got home. I, I flew in from, from New York. At 12, 12.30 a.m. Or, or so, Ben's and I are on the phone, and he's telling me, uh, by the way, um, I, I rewrote this the scene. Uh, it's in your email. Okay. <laughs> so I, I read the uh, By the way, the this scene. is before the director knew that the scene was rewritten. <laughs> right. We're still working on set. And, and the writers didn't know, and the other actor in the scene, Larry I, Day. I, I got a call no, at wait, wait, quarter to seven in the morning. Ben's is on the phone. He's like, DJ, DJ, um... I really need you to see something. Uh, uh, can, I, can I talk to you now? I was like, I'm in the car, Ben. Can, can we wait till we get on set? <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was quite interesting. So, and then he tells me, and, and you have to be off book. You have to be perfect. You can't um, fumble on your words. Nothing like that. You you got to be really professional. We got to do this. We got to bring it. So uh, I started. You know, it's a short film, lower budget. So I had to pack, choose some some wardrobe. I, so I then, you know, got ready, started doing my nails, things like that. I went to bed at 2.30 a.m., woke up at 5.50 a.m. because I had to meet him so we can, you know, really start uh, practicing and, and working on our chemistry and things. So it was, it was rather interesting. Okay. <laughs> uh, who else is in the movie besides those who are around this table? Oh, we just got uh, Lin Lin Liu, who just said how it sound great. She's in Toronto right now. Um, we have uh, Russell Ewan. Right? Yes, Russell, who's actually in Toronto as well right now. Mm -hmm. um, they could possibly both be uh, listening. They played uh, the Asian couple who has the miscarriage. Okay. Um, which was a very dramatic scene where she's. <coughs> Go ahead. No, what I was going to say is, you know, we keep saying the, you know the Caucasian couple, the Asian couple, because you know the concept of the film also was that the three separate couples all had different nationalities, but none of them were to display any accent. So it's not like it was discernible, you know, by, you know, by hearing them speak. It was just their look. So, okay. they, so, so it's also a way to break the stereotypes, which is what you need to do as a performer, because, you know, they try to put you in. A box and, and, and who, well, i got to mention right now that there's a, a young man who, your name is, who's with the camera? Donald. Donald. Donald's got a camera, because I guess, as I mentioned, uh, when, when Ben's travels, he has an entourage, and everything is 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 documented. But at the time, I, I have to mention for the benefit of the listening audience who can't see this, at the time when people are talking about Ben's, he's sitting there going, "Cut, cut, <laughs> cut." So uh, so don't don't cut anything. This, this all stays. I just want to make sure everyone. It'll all be on the it. website in about yeah. forty-eight I'll hours. I'll be on the website. The website, by the way, is uh, onelovethefilm.com. That's www.onelovethefilm.com. And if you don't remember the 
the uh, URL. Just go to my website, PeterAnthonyHolder.com. Click on the What's On page for tonight's date, and you'll find it right there. We'll take a break and continue talking with the cast and crew from One Love. This is Montreal. Now, you mentioned, DJ, during the break that uh, the people who were working on this film came together much from the same mindset as, as Ben's. Yeah, absolutely. Being yeah. very independent. I, I think that um, we, we were able to attract this, um, this type of talent because they're not they're not usually faced with these challenges in acting all the time. I think that they wanted to play these parts because they saw the role as something that they never did before and something that they would be able to do uh, very well, but never had the chance to. And uh, many of them told me, they, they, th they thanked me because they said, well, we would do this again in a heartbeat. Because the things that we did here, we don't get to do in commercials, and we, we, we get to play small parts in these big films, yeah. and we never we never get and to these play these. These are people these. with like yeah. 80, fil 80 to yeah. 100 film credits. I can't. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was speechless when they said that. I said, "You're you're an amazing actor or actress. I can't believe they did, they didn't let you do that." Mm -hmm. And they they performed. They were all ready. They read the script. They showed up and they performed. So uh, I my, it made my job really easy. Let's be like the film version of uh, when you guys are in theater school. It's like uh, let's get together and play. Mm -hmm. Is that Absolutely. what it is? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And you know what's funny? When, when uh, me and DJ was on the way over here just now, we were talking and, you know, about how, you know, how much of a great time it was. And I told him that in 15 years of acting, I had never touched a woman's face on screen. I had never had a tender moment with a woman on screen or a man. But I'm just letting you know. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you mean none of those interrogation scenes? Um, <laughs> It's, it's, it's always, it's the, the, you know, they want to put you in a niche, right. and you're grateful that you're there because you get to, you know, make some money, and you get to, you know, advance your career, but then after a while, you know, you realize, wow, you know, I've never done that, and that's something that I did in, you know, in this movie, which, which was Touch Her Face, when she was uh, having bad dreams and bad feelings about the adoption that eventually did go wrong. So uh, that's what, and that's what you want to do. You want to do it because you get to do stuff that you just won't get an opportunity to do. I, I also think that what, what you, were, you were talking about, how do you get a film like this made yeah. uh, when you don't get grants and all that, um, through, through the, the passion of... Uh, the, just, just, you know, Josh was talking about uh, his contribution and, he, you know, he going around telling people the story, getting them involved in that and getting them uh, passionate about that was one of the ways that jo Josh was able to get a lot of those things, a lot of the hospital. Just talking about what the film's going to be about started to inspire people to give us stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the equipment. C Cine Pool gave us a lot of equipment. The camera gear, the Pautomatic Camera. Yeah. We were able to get, uh, uh, you know, a, a Paola, the production designer. She gave so much yeah. to us. Uh, the Jewish General. Oh, yeah, gave yeah us, the Jewish General yeah. Hospital gave us probably half a million dollars worth of equipment mm -hmm. to just fill up the set. We were shooting at a, at a hospital in, uh, in RDP. Um, and it was a kid's uh, mental hospital, basically. Um, and the hallways were completely, completely bare. Every room was bare. There wasn't a table or a chair to be seen anywhere. And we filled up this place. It looked like an emergency room and a hospital room and a maternity ward. And it just, nobody, we had people that, that work at hospitals that came in and said, nobody would ever question that this wasn't a hospital. Now, when will we have the opportunity to see this film? I will be uh, sending it on the festival circuit and handing it over to my distributor to uh, to get it on TV as soon as possible after that. Um, and then we plan on making this into a feature. I already have investors okay. that are lining up and the two writers that wrote the short are lining up to uh, possibly write the feature as well. And uh, we'll have a feature film ready for everybody in Montreal. And to hopefully he keeps me on board, doesn't cut me to <laughs> some famous... LA actress. <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy. Come on. I, I just wanted to, to just add something in. I think that while we were shooting the film, one of the things that was uh, pretty evident to me that we were doing our job mm -hmm. was when my, my director of photography stood up and looked at the scene where um, the, uh, our, our character ha had, a, had a miscarriage and he put up his hands like a frame and he said, see this DJ? This right here was my fear for six months while I was while my wife was pregnant, and he just looked at it for a while, stopped, walked away, and I said, "We're doing our job." Wow! wow. The film is called One Love, and I, the website again is uh, www.onelove. The film, and people uh, can keep uh, an eye on the website and find yeah, out. Yeah, we're gonna have pictures up story. there in the next uh, in the next uh, few days. I thank you guys. And one more thing, I can't leave the show without.